Good old spasm from good old nothing. I thought to take a break from the new album even though I really like it and look at a Meshuga classic. And this song was mentioned a bunch in the comments and also repeatedly requested by this guy, Saints Rule 18. So I hope you're watching because if you're not, I'm gonna hunt you down and, uh, and uh, talk to you about it. And before we start, I just want to remind you that if you like these videos and you're not subscribed... I mean, come on, I put all this time and effort, I buy all the pens, the scissors and the paper and you won't even press one button for me? Do you hate me? How was that? That was good? Yeah? Ah, uh, again? Yeah, of course I can do it again. Ha, <laughs> wow. So first, I'll run through the main riffs of the song and after that, I'll show you the embarrassingly sneaky riff that I missed. And I'm sure some of you did as well. Don't lie. Yalla, let's do it. The first three of these riffs are all in eight bar frames. So I'll use this magnificent eight bar board thing that I made to show you how each one of these riffs is constructed. All of these bars are four four bars. So each row is one bar. Each bar is divided into four main beats and each beat is divided into four smaller sub beats. Okay, the first riff, the intro riff, is a pattern in seven, the big seven, so seven of those main beats, quarter notes, and it looks like this. By the way, the lower squares represent the kick drum and the higher ones are the snare drums. The guitars play pretty much in unison with the drums, so this is how it's gonna be. So if our frame is 8 bars, that means 32 main beats, which also means we can fit our 7 beat phrase 4 times, plus a 4 beat remainder. Let's put that into my fancy thing, <laughs> fast forward, fast forward, oh and by the way, for the remainder, we can just reuse the first 4 quarter notes of the pattern, because, uh, because, why not? Okay, numbers, 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 let's hear this thing. Such a nasty riff. I love it. The next riff is shorter. It's that epic epic verse riff. That thing. It's 19 beats long, but it's sub beats actually, the smaller portions. So 16th notes if you will. This one looks like this. So switching to thinking in smaller beats, our 32 main beat frame becomes 32 times 4, 128 sub beats, which means our 19 sub beat phrase can be played 6 full times with a remainder of 14 beats, which again would be stolen from itself. The whole section sounds like this. Oh, splendid, that's marvelous. The last 8 bar riff we have is the riff behind the guitar solo. This riff is 27 sub beats long, holy shit, and it looks like this. So, numbers, 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 we get 4 full reps with a remainder of 20 sub beats, which is again gonna be played as, uh, yeah, you get it. Oh, but by the way, the cool thing to notice is that when they play the shorter version, they skip this note here, which leaves a gap of suspense, which is pretty awesome. Check it out. So 
Saints Rule 18, are you still watching? Anyway, now we get to the juicy part of the song, that epic snare drum groove thing. It's a four bar phrase, so it's shorter. The kick drum, guitars and bass all play these stabs in unison, in this sequence, 5-6-5-5-5. Five, 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 five. These are all subbeats, or 16th notes, by the way. Now, over that, Thomas plays all 16th notes on the snare drum, accenting these specific hits. This, together with this, creates a super disorienting, some might say spasmy, oh, that's why they call it that, groove that sounds awesome, especially when repeated. Yo, why can't I write these kind of solos? Cause you're a loser. For the outro of the song, we have everyone playing this 9 beat groove divided into 4 and 5. Now, these are also subbeats, but not as small as the previous ones and not as big as the main beats, which is not confusing at all. And on and on forever. And now we get to the embarrassing part. The riff that I totally missed. I never noticed this even existed till about a month ago. You know how Meshuga always has these soaring guitar lines? Usually playing some evil melody or just a minor second on top of everything and is always in 4-4? Well, this one doesn't. This song has a 6-8 pattern that just runs through the entirety of the song, except for one part. I mean, it only stops when that snare drum part happens. This is the pattern. I didn't see that coming at all. I mean, I don't think I've noticed this in any other song. Let me know if I'm wrong, because, because let me know, I wanna know. And that's spasm for ya, rhythmically at least. Stay tuned for next week as we're going back to Immutable with one of the longest Meshuggah riffs I've ever analyzed, followed by the I livestream, which I'm getting pretty stressed out about. Thanks a lot to all my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are seriously the best. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the future.